everyone, so a lot of you guys might know that I went into railing and I did two weeks travelling around Europe and a lot of you guys have asked me to do a advice video and tips on into railing. So what I did was I got you guys to send in loads of questions. I then wrote lots of points and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through all the different aspects into railing depending on what you guys have asked me. Uh, let's go from where it all started. So here's my little notebook. Okay, so I decided I wanted to go into railing in January. As soon as the clock chimed 12, I thought, fuck, I'm gonna be 24 this year. I haven't done any traveling. I'm gonna be 25 next year. That's nearly 30. I'm not traveled at all. I need to get out there. So I put the idea forward to Matthew about into railing and he said, it sounded shit, pretty much. So I was like, fine, see you later, I'm gonna ask someone else. So I put the, a beacon out on Facebook and I said, anyone wanna come uh, into railing with me? Blah, 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 blah. Leanne piped up and said, hey, I'll come with you. So fab, I had a travel buddy. We got our interrail tickets. Now with interrail tickets, there's a variety of different kinds of tickets. We got a 14 day global pass, which basically means you can travel anywhere in Europe for the 14 days that you have like booked the ticket for. We did like, I think it was, I think it was right from the 6th of July onwards. Um, you can't travel around your own country. So you can literally go on any train in Europe, apart from one in your own country. And they do like other ones that do different length. So obviously check out the website and see which one would suit you better. Then obviously what we wanted to plan the route. So we kind of knew already where we wanted to go. We sort of said we wanted to go to Paris, Amsterdam, Prague, Berlin. Um, and I said I'd really like to go to Austria. So basically what I did was I sort of looked at the map of Europe and I thought what would be the best way to go. So I thought hang on London to Amsterdam and then go across to Berlin, then go down to Prague and then go down to Austria, then take a big old journey back to Paris and then home again. When it came to deciding where to go in Austria, you know, you could have gone for the typical Vienna or something like that. But I really wanted like a countryside kind of retreat, something that was going to be not very populated, something really beautiful in the mountains, you know, with water, something that you would really relate to being in Austria. So I went on Google Maps and I zoomed in on Austria and I found a little blue splodge, which was a lake. Then I zoomed in even further and I saw there was a town. So I Wikipedia the town and it was fantastic. So I thought that's the one. So we had five destinations over 14 days. We spent one day traveling and two full days exploring the place. After picking the route, we then had to book our train. So when you buy your interrail ticket, you get a ticket through the post and that is your global pass. And you get a little leaflet with it, you get a few maps with it. It's really, really helpful. If you use your ticket number, you can log on to the interrail website and do your own personal itinerary. So what I did was I put in all the different places that we wanted to go to and on which dates. For example, we flew to Amsterdam. So the first train that we were actually gonna catch was gonna be Amsterdam to Berlin. So on the date that we were leaving Amsterdam, we put date, um, and then the station was Amsterdam to Berlin and then it would give us the best possible route and you got to kind of pick a time that suited you. So we did that on every single place. So we'd like do Amsterdam to Berlin and then the next after the next few days we'd then do Berlin to Prague and it would give you all the different options for getting around. Um, and it was really super easy to use and then once you've got your itinerary and your train times you can print it off. I will let you know now that some trains do require a reservation. So most of the trains were optional so you could choose to reserve a seat. Some were mandatory, so you had to reserve a seat, and some not applicable, you just couldn't reserve a seat. In my opinion, I would try and reserve a seat if possible. Um, it's probably only an extra six euro each uh, for each journey. If you can and you've got the budget to reserve a seat, then definitely do so. I did kind of find it a little bit stressful when you're getting on the train, you've got all your luggage and you're desperately just trying to find a seat that hasn't already got a reserve sign on it. You don't really want to be spending like four or five hours on a train sitting in the floor and having to keep moving when people keep coming past. Luckily, me and Leanne did find a seat in every single train, but just for, just my advice to you, I would definitely try and reserve as many seats as you possibly can. The next thing we had to do was booking our accommodation. Now, we used Airbnb. Airbnb is incredible. I cannot stress how much I love that website. You can decide whether you want to stay in just a room, if you want to stay in a shared house or have your own apartment. Now, we wanted our own apartment just because we wanted a little bit more luxury. You know, we're both sort of in our mid twenties. We didn't really want to go down the hostel route. So we found some fabulous Airbnbs for about 30 pounds a night. That was for 
the apartment. So that would be for like 15 pounds each. It's really great because you have a really good communication with the owner of the place. You kind of give them a general idea of when you're gonna get there because you've already got your train times. But the night before we would go to the next place, out of courtesy, I would just send them another little message just saying, hey, just a friendly reminder that we're going to arrive approximately at like 4.30. And then they would say, cool. So that was basically the planning. Packing. Now I definitely overpacked, not gonna lie. It was my first proper traveling experience, but now I know. Um, I took a East Pack duffel bag. I don't actually have it on me because Matty's mum's borrowing it for her holiday. Um, but I will put a link below to where it is. It's basically a rather large duffel bag with a pull-out handle and some wheels which made it really easy to use in stations and also to get on train. You would take maybe a couple of pair of jeans, a couple of pairs of shorts, a few dresses and you know a, couple, a few tops. I definitely did overkill when it came to everything. I basically had in mind that I was going to have a different outfit for each day. No way. I definitely wore clothes more than once. I wore jeans pretty much every time I travelled like on the trains or leggings. I just I wanted something comfy to wear, so when you are like traveling on the trains, make sure you got comfy clothes. So I wore like stretchy jeans or like leggings. I did not give a shit what I looked like when I was traveling because it was just, it's quite a tiring thing to do. I also packed in my kind of handbag, which was like my bag I had at me all the time. Obviously my cameras, um, I had some deodorant, I had a big bottle of water. I didn't bother with makeup in that bag, no way. Um, and I had, which was like my Bible, my travel itinerary. Now this isn't my interrail travel itinerary, this is for Florida. What I did was I printed off all the train times, all the Airbnb locations, I also printed off all other tickets, so I had my plane tickets in there, I had my Eurostar tickets in there, I also kept my passport in there, and basically this was like the holy grail. I kept everything really important in this folder, and I put it in my handbag, and it was with me at all times. Um, I'd also put like snacks in there for the train. Basically it was more about the practicality and what I actually needed. Now the catching trains part, so this is obviously the kind of pinnacle of like interrailing, this is what you're doing, you're catching trains and you're going to different locations. In Europe, if you're already from Europe, then you'll know what I'm about to say. The uh, train platforms are normally up here, like at normal level, and then underground is where the station is. So you go down an escalator and they're kind of underneath. That was like most of the stations were like that that I went to. And then they have these really big screens literally everywhere with the train times on. If, you do, if you're a little bit confused by the language, it'll say on your travel itinerary, so your train times, the name of the station properly and you'll be able to read it. Um, but if you are still a little bit confused as to where the train's going or what train you're supposed to catch, what I did was I matched up the time with my train number. So when you're booking your trains and you're doing your itinerary, it will actually give you the train number, which is something that they don't have in the UK. They don't have train numbers. Um, and so for example, one of my trains might have been IC145. So that was the name of the train and it would say underneath or somewhere on the screen with the time so I'd go oh my god there's two 230 trains which one's mine then you look oh wait it's that one platform nine fabulous and then you just go there and wait for your train I would say in the morning when you're catching your first train so when you're leaving like your location I would try and get to the station comfortably uh, we said about an hour so we got to the station an hour before our train was due to leave only so we could grab some breakfast grab a coffee check where our train was you know and just sort of have a little bit of time to relax before getting on the train because there's nothing worse than rushing for a train, especially in a different country. And then when you get on the train, um, the reservation thing. So if you've got a reservation, you look at your ticket and it'll tell you what carriage you're supposed to get on, what seat number to go to. If not, above the seats will be either a paper slip or an electronic slip saying whether if there's a reservation or not. For like uh, for entertainment on the train, I... I had my iPod, I stacked that full of music, I had my iPad for movies, and Leanne was reading, and I also had a few games. My favourite game to play were Winter Bells, which is a game where you are a rabbit and you're trying to jump up the bells, and it's really addictive, and the music's really nice, and it's really calming. And when I actually got around to travelling around the countries, um, and the cities, I should say, uh, me and Leanne made like an itinerary for each city, the things that we wanted to do. So we put like, 
We asked recommendations out on Twitter and we also Googled a lot of stuff and we basically just got a scrap piece of paper, wrote down a list of things we wanted to do and we just ticked them off. To get around the cities, I used City Mapper. Now, if it wasn't for City Mapper, I think I probably would have not done half the amount of stuff that we did because of navigation. Now, City Mapper is a, such an easy app to use. Um, it's sort of in the, ma the major cities, uh, so we couldn't really use it in Prague or in Austria, but for everywhere else, perfect. So it gives you all the public transport information, all like the metro, all the underground, the buses, it tells you walking routes, bike routes, um, and it tells you how long it's gonna take, how many calories you're gonna burn. It's just so good. And also, because it's like almost got an integrated search engine, um, it will sort of look for the places that you wanna go to. So if you write like the Jewish Museum, it will come up with the Jewish Museum and have a picture of it and have some information on it. It's really, really awesome, and I completely recommend getting it. And then if like the places out to eat, we would literally walk around and just stumble across restaurants. We'd go, that oh, looks nice, and money. I guess you guys are dying to know how much money I spent. Okay, so let's say the interrail ticket was around, I think it was about three to four hundred pounds for an interrail ticket. Go anywhere you want though, so you can go in many places as you like. And then for Airbnb, we spent around 30 pounds a night, so about 15 pounds a night for accommodation. I took a lot of spending money because I have been saving for this trip for a while, and I kind of wanted it to be one of those things where I, I didn't have to go, oh, I can't do that because I can't afford it, or, oh. I got that much money. So I did save up quite a money quite a bit of money. I I took a thousand pounds with me. And me and Leanne, we did eat really well. We ate, we pretty much ate every meal time. If you go travelling or you're with or you're trying to sort of do things on a budget, it's fine to just go to the supermarket and buy food. But we ate good. Not gonna lie, we love food. So we were being really experimented when it came to food. So we did spend a lot of money on food and alcohol. Well, I spent an extortionate amount of money on souvenirs because I just wanted to spoil my family. So accommodation was probably about £210 each and then your ticket's about three to £400. So you're looking at about five to six hundred pounds for travel and accommodation and then obviously spending money on top. You could probably get away, I'm not even gonna lie, I spent a lot of money on shit. So um, you could probably take about 500 euro with you and live comfortably um, and you'd be absolutely fine. Um, what I did with my money was rather than going into the travel agency and going, hello, can you change my pounds into euros please? And then giving me like loads of cash. Uh, they recommended that I used a cash card because I actually said to her, can I have 100 pounds worth of euros and I'm just going to spend the rest of my card? And she was like, no, because, she, well she didn't say no. <laughs> she basically told me that my bank would charge me 2.5% on every single transaction that I made and also obviously on withdrawing money. So what she recommended was getting a travel card. So I did this through Thomas Cook and it was like a travel card passport and it's basically exactly the same as a debit card. So what they do is you uh, you pay, you give them the money, so you put your card in the machine and you pin it and it's like, like buying something in a shop and then they put that money onto this travel passport. So you don't have any like fees when you use it. You basically use it in the shops like you would a normal debit card and you can use it to withdraw money as well. If you need to check it whilst you're away, you can go on the website and register it and then check the balance. You can even like top it up. Thank you so much for like tweeting me questions. Um, you should follow me on Twitter by the way. I hope that was helpful and if you guys are gonna go into railing then, or do any kind of traveling, then I wish you all the luck in the world and I hope you have a fantastic time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye. I'm trying to do this for my video, you don't make me look bad. Mm. How the fuck did Matthew get six million on here? Uh.